in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, fraternal greetings to you from the Carmelite Fathers and warm welcome to Carmel Light, reflection on the day's readings. It's the 5th of April, Monday of the Easter octave. And today we remember Saint Vincent Ferrar, a priest, about whom Larissa now will give us more details. Roman Catholics celebrate the missionary efforts of St. Vincent Ferro on April 5th. The Dominican preacher brought thousands of Europeans into the Catholic Church during a period of political and spiritual crisis in Western Europe. Vincent Ferro was born in Valencia, Spain during 1357. His parents raised him to care deeply about his religious duties without neglecting his education or concern for the poor. One of his siblings, Boniface, later joined the Carthusian order and became its superior general. Vincent, however, would become a Dominican and preach the gospel throughout Europe. He joined at age 18 in 1374. As a member of the Dominican order of preachers, Vincent committed much of the Bible to memory while also studying the Church Fathers and philosophy. By age 28, he was renowned for his preaching and also known to have a gift of prophecy. Five years later, a representative of Pope Clement VII chose Vincent to accompany him to France, where he preached extensively. While Vincent sought to live out his order's commitment to the preaching of the Gospel, he could not escape becoming involved in the political intrigues of the day. Two rival claimants to the papacy emerged during the late 1300s, one in Rome and another in the French city of Avignon. Each claimed the allegiance of roughly half of Western Europe. Caught between the rival claimants, Vincent attempted to persuade the Avignon Pope Benedict XIII to negotiate an end to the schism. Benedict, who was regarded as Pope in both Spain and France, sought to honour Vincent by consecrating him as a bishop. But the Dominican friar had no interest in advancing within the church and regarded many bishops of his time as negligent leaders distracted by luxury. I blush and tremble, he wrote in a letter, when I consider the terrible judgment impending on ecclesiastical superiors who live at their ease in rich palaces, while so many souls redeemed by the blood of Christ are perishing. I pray without ceasing to the Lord of the harvest that he send good workmen into his harvest. Vincent not only prayed but acted, committing himself to missionary work and resolving to preach in every town between Avignon and his hometown in Spain. In a commanding style, he denounced greed, blasphemy, sexual immorality, and popular disregard for the truths of faith. His sermons often drew crowds of thousands and prompted dramatic conversions. Popular acclaim, however, did not distract him from a life of asceticism and poverty. He abstained completely from meat, slept on a straw mat, consumed only bread and water on Wednesdays and Fridays, and accepted no donations for himself beyond what he needed to survive. He travelled with five other Dominican friars at all times, and the men would spend hours hearing confessions. For two decades, Vincent and his group of friars undertook preaching missions in Spain, Italy, and France. When he travelled outside these regions, into Germany and other parts of the Mediterranean, those who did not know the languages in which he preached would testify that they had understood every word he said in the same manner as the apostles experienced at Pentecost. Although he did not heal the temporary divisions within the church, Vincent succeeded in strengthening large numbers of Europeans in their Catholic faith. He wrote little, 
although some of his works have survived and exist in modern English translations. St. Vincent Ferro died on April 5, 1419, at age 62, in the city of Vannes in the French region of Brittany. He was canonized in 1455 and has more recently become the namesake of a traditional Catholic community approved by the Holy See, the Fraternity of St. Vincent Ferro. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us pray. O God, who did vouch to glorify the Church by the merits and preaching of St. Vincent Ferro, thy confessor, grant us thy servants that we may be taught by his example and be delivered by his patronage from all adversities. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brother and sister, for our reflection today, we have chosen the first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles. You must remember, in this Easter season, we will have the readings from the Acts of the Apostles in the first reading. And today we have chapter 2, verses 14, then 22 to 23. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sown with an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He fought so and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
my dear brother and sister here it is the day after easter and we are presented right away with the choice in today's first reading that we just heard we see peter boldly proclaiming the resurrection of christ and calling his fellow jews to conversion and in the gospel we see some of israel's religious leaders working very hard to the point of bribery to wipe out any hint that jesus may have reason and in between the two we have the guards at the tomb every day men with families who were just trying to survive and who did not seem to care one way or the other what happened to jesus in a sense we have those who were hot the disciples those who were cold the chief priests and those who were lukewarm the guards which word describes you it seems that most people today tend to follow into the lukewarm category there aren't all that many militant atheists out there who are completely cold to the things of god but neither are there a lot of people who are on fire for the lord most are good people who think highly of jesus but whose convictions about him are not strong enough to make them want to dedicate their lives to serving him and his church imagine what the world would look like if everyone were to answer the call to evangelization imagine the awakening that would take place in the church and the ripple effect it would have in the world imagine the healings the miracles and the conversions that would happen is this possible my dear friend is this possible yes it is and each one of us can make a difference we are in the season of grace right now as we look forward to pentecost so many people are trying hard but just haven't come to know jesus for who he truly is so many are waiting to hear the good news so let's begin the easter season by begging god for an outpouring of grace Let's all decide to be hot and not look warm so that more people will come to see Jesus in a new light. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire to spread the gospel to the world. Amen. We pray the responsorial psalm. Your response, preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my lot. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, 
who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord before me always. With him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my flesh shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, bliss forever. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle. That they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brother and sister, in preparation for the Divine Mercy Sunday, we pray the Novena Prayer to Divine Mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, I would like to thank you for your personal Easter greetings. Many of you had sent the greetings and I could not respond to you personally, individually. But I appreciate your love, your thoughtfulness and your concern. I am grateful to you and be assured of my prayers. And today we remember all those who are celebrating their birthday, especially Father Oswald Krasta, Carmelite, Rosie Fernandez from Kurla, Mumbai, Heslet Swati from Bengaluru, celebrating her 25th birthday, the Silver Jubilee of Life, and Josephine de Souza, celebrating her 54th birthday. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of Julius Fernandez from Pune and Anthony de Souza from Venor. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.